Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Denise Salcedo here, and I am so excited because my guest for today is none other than WWE correspondent and host of WWE's The Bump, Kayla Braxton. Kayla, thank you so much for coming on today. Oh, thanks for having me. No, I got to tell you, I've always been such a big fan of your work, your personality. I know the day we met, that was the first thing I told you. And when this all happened, I was like, I got to get Kayla in for an interview at some point. Oh, yeah. I, I'm super excited to do this with you. And it was, yeah, we had a lot of fun at all. WWE Watch Along. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was definitely a really cool experience. So I know that right now, like the world is sort of bizarre and crazy. Mm -hmm. So let's just kind of start off there. How are you spending the downtime that you have right now, which with your busy schedule, it, it's it's very rare to have this. Well, as you mentioned, uh, my uh, WB The Bump. So we're still putting out episodes every single week, uh, thankfully. And it's been really cool that we still get to provide that content to the fans sitting at home. Um, cause at the end of the day, there's not a lot happening around the world right now. So if we can, uh, take people's mind off of what is happening and spark a little joy in their spirits for an hour every week, we want to do that. So that's been keeping me busy. I've also been doing, uh, a new little segment on IG live called the Braxton beat, uh, done a couple already did one with, uh, my latest one was with Becky Lynch. Um, so that's also been keeping me busy. And other than that, I've been just like Netflix in, you know, I've been exactly. catching up on all those shows. <laughs> and there's so much right now, but let's, let's jump into the fact that you started the, the Instagram live stream that you're doing. That's really cool. Did you ever think that, um, that maybe, you know, something like this out of a bad thing, something good would come out because you're getting this interactions with your viewerships and all of that. I mean, that's just the kind of company WWE is, you know, we, the company's whole goal is to, to entertain. And I mean, we saw the numbers after, after WrestleMania, we had, we had records with content viewership. And so it's just really cool to uh, be able to add to that uh, in my own kind of way with my own kind of spin. Uh, so I'm still kind of evolving, trying to figure out what the Braxton B actually is. We've only done a few of those, but definitely in the coming weeks, I've got some really fun ideas. Uh, that I, I think our viewers would be entertained by. <laughs> it's a really cool way to, you know, sort of just like keep out there, keep doing stuff. And like, even though you're still doing the bump and other things, it's still like an additional mm -hmm. thing that could be really awesome. Uh, mm -hmm. So now speaking of WrestleMania, how is your WrestleMania experience different from all the past WrestleManias that you've participated in? Just sat on my couch, you know, I mean, the world knows that we weren't live, you know, we were all tweeting from the comfort of our own homes. I actually had one of my coworkers joke because I was doing a backstage interview with King Corbin and I was tweeting. I think I told him to keep his day job. Uh, yeah. And my, my coworker goes, how are you tweeting while you're interviewing King Corbin? And it's like, it, we, we had fun with it because we all know we're sitting with our, I have a, a roommate. We're sitting six feet apart on the couch. I turned him into a wrestling fan uh, as we're eating ice cream. So uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was weird being in sweatpants on WrestleMania day instead of a sparkly dress, but, uh, we were all in it together. <laughs> exactly. And it's one of those cool things where it's like, at least we're out here. And I got to tell you, Saturday and Sunday, I didn't think about all the bad stuff going on in the world at all. I was like, oh, WrestleMania, like, let me tweet my thoughts. And it was a very nice distraction. So I think uh, major kudos to WWE for putting that on. Uh, so now let's go ahead and sort of rewind now uh, with your career. So I want to talk about how did you land this opportunity with WWE, uh, especially at such a young age? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I've been doing TV stuff for a long time. I mean, it's always been my, like, a passion of mine. Literally for 10 years now, I've been doing some kind of media, which is insane to think that it's been almost 10 years, 11 years. Uh, so when I was in college, I studied broadcast journalism. Uh, I actually wanted to be a sports broadcaster. My minor was in sports broadcast. Um, and I started, which is a, a advice I give to young uh, people now who have the passion and the desire to do what I do or do what you do, Denise, is create your own content because the world's not waiting around on you. You've got to take initiative and, and, and create something on your own, which is what you're obviously doing here and with what I did in college. I was big into the YouTube world. I tried to be a famous YouTuber. Uh, <laughs> I have a lot of friends who have been very successful in the YouTube world and make a really good living doing that. Uh, but it ended up uh, landing me into a uh, working at a local news station, actually here in Orlando, West Shoe News, where I had my own entertainment travel beat on Orlando My Way, which was an incredible, incredible gig out the gate right out of college. And 
and I did that for about two years. And then WrestleMania, uh, WrestleMania uh, WWE actually reached out to me. I've been friends with Greg Hamilton, the Friday Night SmackDown ring announcer for years. And he said the company was looking for more backstage interviewers, viewers and ring announcers. And I got, in the beginning, I, I wasn't too interested in the job, uh, not because I don't have the respect for the company, but I didn't know anything about it. I, I'm one of those rare people in the company who don't come from this world or know, you know, came in completely blind. I knew Vince McMahon's name, and that was about where that ended. Uh, <laughs> That's so I'm, crazy, though. It's always like, yeah, it's for you, though. One hundred percent. Like this, this world combines everything. I, I mean, sports and entertainment. Um, travel. I mean, this world combines everything that I love and I can't believe it's almost been four years. I know. Right. Okay. So I was going back and I was like, okay, she's with, been with the company for 2016, but I was like, you've done so much with the company. Mm -hmm. We've been able to see you in all sorts of facets and everything that they've done. You know, you've been a part of that, but before we get to that, you know, let's kind of talk about your college career, like your college life. Did you always uh, want to be a journalist or a host? Was that always a passion of yours or when did that passion sort of arise in your life? Uh, when I was nine years old, I, I knew I wanted to do something on TV. Um, I tell, I've told my story before, like on Lillian Garcia's podcast and a few other places, but um, I was raised in, in, in a foster home. And before that, I had a really rough childhood. Like my, my younger years weren't ideal. And I was never passionate about anything. Wasn't In my mind, wasn't good at anything. And I never was pushed to be anything until I met my foster parents who were the biggest supporters, still are the biggest supporters in my entire life. And when I was in elementary school, I was in my new class after I moved into my foster home, and we were all required to participate in something called 4-H. Uh, you may know what that is, but it's, it's really big in the South. Uh, but there's like agriculture, sewing, there's all these different skill sets. You get to choose one and compete. I chose public speaking. Don't know why I did that. I was never, I was always shy. But I thought, hey, this is a good way to get in front of all my new classmates and talk about who I was and just give a speech. I somehow won the competition and that was the first thing I'd ever won in my entire life. I got a big purple ribbon and I remember getting off the school bus that day. It was like a Charlie and a Char chocolate factory moment. I'm running down the driveway holding this purple ribbon. My foster parents didn't know what the heck I was even doing. So I didn't even tell them I was participating in this competition, but they were so proud of me, like the pride in their eyes. And I'd never experienced an adult looking at me like that before with so much pride. And I, that was a day I said, you know what? This makes people happy. This is what I'm going to do. And then fast forward 20 years later, and here we are. <laughs> That's incredible. Like, I'm telling you, it's funny because it's public speaking isn't something that anybody just goes ahead and jumps into. I think, if anything, it's the thing people try to most avoid. Yeah. Um, Very so, true. Yeah. So now you're, you're in college. I want to know, do you still remember your first news package that you ever created or your first um, time hosting or reporting on anything? What was that experience like for you? Well, in college, I didn't really do any of that. I mean, again, I had my own content. So that was just me with a camera going around creating content. Now, when I got my first, when I worked at my first official news station at Washington News, I came in, you know, fake it till you make it. I was young. I was, I was 21 or 22 in a top 20 TV market. Everyone was looking at me like, what are you doing here? Because these guys and gals had been in the business for a long time. I had no business being there. I didn't even know what a Vosot meant. Like I had to like <laughs> Google uh, terms and pretend like I knew what they were. But I did my first package and uh, first time I'd ever done something like this. And I, my news director calls me and she's like, Kayla, great job on this package. But here's the thing. You got to lose that Southern accent. See, I was raised in Alabama, went to college, Tennessee. I used to have the most Southern draw, which you can't really keep that when you're working in like local news. You got to, you know, so I had to work on getting rid of that Southern accent, but uh, that's, that's the one thing I remember is, okay, Southern Kayla's got to go. <laughs> and it's like, it's one of those things where it's that job where they point out, like if something's wrong with you or you're not doing something right, people will go ahead and point it out. So how did you eventually like let go of the accent? I never took any like classes or anything. I, I mean, I think I just was able to just, I don't know. I honestly couldn't even tell you. I think I'm pretty good at I'm not good at accents. That's crazy. I, that's, you would think I would be because I was able to fake it so quickly. Uh, yeah, I honestly can't even answer that. When I go home to see my, my foster parents, though, it's right back out. Or if I have one too many glasses of wine, Southern Kayla is 
in the building. <laughs> you know, they say that whenever you're around people that are from your past or people that really know you that well, that that's when your true identity obviously comes out. So I think that like, it's okay that your accent comes out when you're around them. So what would you say was some of the struggles that you faced early on in your career, or maybe one of the biggest lessons that you've, that you've learned early on in your career? I mean, yeah, I think I, I think I kind of mentioned earlier, just being so young and being so green and having to do a lot of like teaching myself a lot of stuff. Like I could not rely. I wasn't about to go ask someone in that news station how to do anything because I knew um, I knew that I, I didn't want to reveal that about myself that I didn't know what the hell I was doing. Uh, and then also humbling myself and taking advice from people who gave it. Because I am a very naturally hard-headed person. I, in my, I think I know everything. And, uh, and I, I mean, I don't, but I can act that way sometimes. So like, it's kind of letting that down. Like, okay, if someone's trying to help me, take the help and learn. And it's crazy the amount of people who have come through my life since then who have just taught me these little things that I've been, been like, I will find myself, catch myself using that today. Like even in my, doing the bump, how to, how to do, uh, conduct interviews in a more efficient way in a concise way and how to ask the right questions. And uh, so yeah, definitely just accepting the, the help along the way. That's really cool. And like, hey, so now let's go back to WWE. You're there, you're doing all of this stuff. You know, we've seen you, I, I would say that we've seen you move around a lot in the company, which is mm -hmm. great because then, hey, the more eyes on you. So how has, did you ever expect for all of these opportunities to come your way within the company? And what were some of your favorite things that you've done so far? Yeah, that's one thing I can say. Like, I'm, I think I'm one of the few people who literally, in the company, who've literally done every single part of it. So when I, when I started, I was doing ring announcing, which I had never done ring announcing my entire life. I felt like, I felt so silly. Like, when you've never used that part of your, like, vocal cords and you're in the middle of a ring and you're just saying a bunch of stuff, uh, it, you feel silly. So I, I remember... Um, thinking. I was like, I don't know if this is exactly what I, I want to do. And I expressed that to the, the, the right people in the company that although I, if Vince McMahon's at Caleb, we want you to be the new ring announcer of whatever brand, that's exactly what I'm going to do because <laughs> at the end of the day, he's the one sending me my paychecks. Uh, but I knew that what I wanted to do and I expressed it to my boss, Michael Cole, creating content, original content and hosting was where my, where my passion was. And he was very receptive to that really early on. Uh, never heard the word no from him when it came to me wanting to pitch new ideas. Um, and I, I've, wait, what was your question? <laughs> uh, okay. Well, cause you know, you've done, okay. So you've done the, the live ring announcing, you've done the backstage yeah. interviewing, you've done the content creation, uh, pretty much all aspects. And sometimes certain people are, you know, only very strong at one point, but you've been mm -hmm. successful in all of the things that you've done. So I wanted to know what was your favorite, which you just answered with the okay. content creating and stuff. Host, hosting the bump is literally what brings me joy every single week. Like this is, where I feel like I, I thrive and where I belong and where I can really be me because in, and I am, and I'm so honored that I have the opportunity to be the Friday night Smackdown back to the interviewer too. Like that is, you know, that's something that you want when you come to WWE, I was looking at Renee Young when I was, when I was new, like, you know what, I want to do what Renee Young is doing right now. And it seemed like such a far stretch possibility. And it's crazy to think that now Renee Young and I are both the Friday night Smackdown interviewers and we both have our own talk shows. And so, and, and that's, what's really cool to kind of, to kind of soak in like, wow, I'm finally where I, where, when I was here, well, let me try to say that my, uh, my mentor, where my mentor was when I arrived, I have now arrived in that same place. So, uh, it, it just, it's really cool. What would you say is maybe some of the advice that Renee Young gave you or something that she did that sort of helped you, you know, eventually reach that point to where you guys were, are on par? I mean, I, th I think, you know, one thing, this is a very, it could be a very stressful place to work, you know, the hours, the traveling, um, the constant changes, you know, especially we're live, like we are live, you know, there's not a lot of room for error when you're live. And I think I have, I'm, I'm a perfectionist. I think a lot of people in our industry are, and we tend to get into our heads, you know, you, you have one screw up one week and then it's really hard to get out of your head about it and, and just do better the next week. So I, I think the one thing she just kind of always told me was, if you mess up, move on, you know, you're the, you're like, don't beat yourself up for, for any mistakes you made because all, you know, chances are you're the only one who remembers it and just get better the next week. 
you know, you're only as good as your last mistake and that's kind of how things work, but just make sure the mistake doesn't happen again. And you're told that from the moment you walk through the doors at the NXT Performance Center is, especially with, when NXT was considered developmental, this is where you mess up, this is where you learn. And then that's when you go to Raw or SmackDown and you just don't repeat those same mistakes. <laughs> I, you know, I love that you mentioned that because, you know, obviously that's something that within myself, I see like, oh man, like I made a mistake, but it's true. Sometimes you're the only person that notices or, or, you know, it's just something that it's natural. And you're also, you can beat yourself up over the head very easily with it. So kind of hearing that say like, it's okay to mess up. It's very, it's a, it's a relief, honestly. And I'm sure you must've felt that oh, yeah. when she said something like that to you. Because everyone messes up. None of us are perfect. I mean, not even close. The amount of hours that we're on television every week talking, you're going to mess up. If you ever, if, if for those who watch The Bump, you can go through and catch. Because we're live, we're always live too, doing The Bump. And I have the habit of just saying the, the things that just don't make any sense. Like, I don't, I always mess up phrases. Sometimes I try to say something that comes out really <laughs> dirty and I don't mean it, but you got to laugh at it. And like everyone that, and our fans, like I love our fans because they are so forgiving and they're so supportive. An example, when I, my very first live event how, uh, here in Florida, when I was brand new, first time ring announcing, so nervous. And I was getting into the ring and I didn't practice getting in and out of his ring with, with heels on, which I should have done immediately fall through no. the, stair, the stairs yep but I got back up got nailed the ring I was so flustered I completely forgot how to say the following contest is scheduled for one fall I forgot the the order of words and the fans could just tell that I was just like freaking out and all of a sudden all together the fans said it for me the following like it was just like and that's when I fell in love with like the NXT universe the WWE universe I'm like man you know they they consume so much of our products and they support so much our product, but they support all of us individually. And just, I don't know, I, I, I love our fans. That's incredible because that could have easily been a very frightening moment. After that, if you were anybody else, if you were somebody different, you could have been like, you know what, I'm done. I'm never doing that again. Send somebody else <laughs> and, you know, move on from there. So the fact yeah. that a very beautiful moment came out of that for you is pretty, pretty awesome. So now, obviously, with WWE, you're on the road. You've traveled pretty much everywhere. What are some of your favorite places that you've been to? I think, you know, this is actually a really difficult question and I get asked this a lot and I should just have like a, a question, I'm mean, going to answer in my pocket for this, but I'll give you, I'll give you like one of the most, like my favorite experience that I've had since working with NXT, which uh, is during my NXT run for two years in a row, I was the ring announcer for the Download Festival. Uh, so we would go to the UK in the summer, perform around a few venues, you know, we did Paris, we did uh, Belgium. Uh, Manchester, and then download festivals where we typically would end. It would be two or three nights of like heavy metal. Uh, the biggest names in the industry you could think of, uh, you know, Ozzy Osbourne, Metallica, Red Hot Chili Peppers, uh, Marilyn Manson, Steel Panther. I mean, the list goes on. And we've got a WWE ring in the middle of it all. We're having matches. You got these rock stars who you grow up listening to sitting in your crowd, in your audience watching you. Uh, I mean, by far the coolest experience that I've had since I've been here is the download festival. And I really want to go back and I really like want them to send me back, but I think I've already, I've already had my two times. So they've got to give other people the opportunity. Right. Right. That's really awesome. And it can be scary when you're seeing like all these people that like, you know, and are very well known famous people. It can definitely add some pressure. Uh, what has been one of your worst travel experiences? Oh, oh man. Okay, so this was Super Bowl Sunday two years ago. We're in Washington, I think, like Seattle or something like that. And um, a lot of the superstars decided to drive ahead to the next town. We were on a live event circuit. So they drove on to the, you know, we finished the show on Saturday night, and they drove on. Sunday comes along, and the, the roads are covered in snow. I stayed in the town to drive the next day. I, again, from the South, I didn't see snow until I was an adult. I can't drive in snow. I had a three-hour drive ahead of me, and I had to somehow get to this next town on snowy uh, roads. I was terrified out of my mind. I was slipping and sliding all over the road, um, driving maybe seven miles an hour. Uh, and I remember a cop get, comes behind me, puts on his lights. I'm crying because I'm so scared <laughs> to drive. He, I rolled down the window and he's like, like, are you okay? 
He's like, where are you from? I said, Florida. And he just starts dying laughing at me. He's like, of course you're from Florida. You can't handle these roads. Um, so finally, I can't, like, I didn't feel safe continuing that drive. So I abandoned my car on the side of the road. I texted Seamus. And I was like, Seamus, I knew, I knew what, what, what uh, talent were coming behind me because we're all kind of driving on this thing. Right. I was like, are you, how far are you from, from where I am? I dropped a pen. He goes, I'm coming up behind you, girl. So he, and, and I remember he was wearing like shorts and flip flops. I'm like, what is wrong with you? Uh, pulls over behind me. I, he grabs on myself. We jump into his car and he drives me the rest of the way. And my car just stayed on the side of the road until I called the rental car company. I was like, hey, this is where your car is at. Uh, oh, that was probably one of the worst God. travel experiences. And uh, thank you to Seamus for saving my life. <laughs> oh, my God. I was going to say, that could be very scary, okay? Having to drive in the snow, it's not like something that everybody is accustomed to doing. So you got very, very lucky that Seamus was behind you or near you or whatever that ended up making it work. Oh, yeah. Kudos to you on that. So <laughs> now, what would you say is something that is still left on your bucket list in your career, whether it be in WWE or even further down the line? Man, you know, like I'm doing exact, I think I'm exactly where I need to be right now. I mean, I just want to continue to get better. I welcome any and all opportunities that come my way. Obviously, um, I was actually talking to my friend about this the other day. It's like, you know, WWE is one of these places that I, I see myself always being a part of in some way, even if it's not full time. Um, I hope to always somehow be a contributor here, but maybe also uh, take up some other uh, responsibilities at other large companies, whether it be, you know, um, you know, access uh entertainment tonight I have, a, I have a passion for the entertainment news as well whether it's me doing stuff for fox sports which is something i'm also interested in um so just i guess just broadening my my hosting horizon uh as as far as it as far as it will go but i definitely see myself growing more here maybe start a podcast with the company you know um yes yeah, so we'll see we'll see Exactly. Everyone's just going to have to find out with me, I guess. <laughs> I think there's still like so many more opportunities. And like, even with just what you're doing right now on Instagram live, that could be a stepping stone to like, you know, someone be like, like, you know what, Kayla, you need to have your own podcast and kind of just go from there. Mm hmm. All right. Yeah, that'd be great. So, Kayla, first of all, thank you so much for doing this interview with me. We are done with the career portion of this part. We're going to go ahead and jump into the lightning round. So how the lightning round is, I ask you 10 questions. You answer as fast as you can, and it's usually a pretty fun way to sort of get to know you a little bit better. So, all right, great. are you ready? I'm ready. All right, guys, here we go. This is lightning round with Kayla Braxton. Question number one, what is the last show you binge watched? Tiger King. Number two, name the thing you'd like to do or place you'd like to visit as soon as the self-isolation is over. Oh, I want to, I think I want to go, uh, maybe Vegas. <laughs> Number three, what was the first concert you attended? Oh, first concert I attended. Man, I, 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 I don't even, I can't even, I don't remember. Our last concert you attended? Last concert I attended. Jeez, this is so hard. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not the or favor. We'll switch it. We'll switch it up. <laughs> I mean, I think it would have had to been Metallica. Or no, nice. I think a Aerosmith. Oh, nice, nice. All right. Uh, question number four. Name your all-time favorite album. We're gonna have to pat. Maybe. I mean, I think Yesterday by the Beatles is gonna have to just be a. I listen to that on loop. <laughs> classic, classic one for sure. Uh, number five. What is your dream vacation? Anything tropical or, or, uh, I, I would love to go to Iceland to see the Northern Lights. Oh yeah. Those look beautiful on pictures from what I've seen. <laughs> Number yes. six, if anyone can play you in a movie of your life, who would you want it to be? I mean, a lot of people say I look like, uh, Meghan Markle, which is funny because there's already been movies about her life, but her maybe, maybe Christina Milian. <laughs> yes. Yes. Number seven, favorite wrestlers theme song. Ah, oh, mm, okay. Favorite wrestlers theme song. This, this, there are, oh, there's so many really good ones right now. Um, I mean, I love Sasha Banks. Her, her new one is, is, is really good. Um, so, ah, I can't help but dance. And then I'm giving you a lot. Sorry. And the <laughs> Usos, because I'm out in trouble oh. for dancing. Okay. You said, sorry, you cut off after the Usos. Okay, so can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, you're good, you're good. So when I, when I used to be a ring announcer, I don't know if this is a loud lightning round, I'm going to say. So when I was ring announcing, I would get in my, they'd get in my, Kayla, stop dancing, because there are a few talents, music where I couldn't help it. 
Usos were one. Bianca Bell. Question number eight. When you're not busy working, how do you like to spend your days off? Typically when I'm traveling all the time, well, obviously right now I'm not doing that, but my day's as lazy as possible. So basically the way I'm quarantining is typically how I like to spend my days off during a normal travel season. Nice. Question number nine. What is your all-time favorite movie or even your top three? Uh, I'm a big horror movie buff. Love horror movies. Uh, the It's, the it, the It's, I mean, it, it obviously was a TV show at first, but the It franchise is by far my, my up there on my top. Number 10, who is your favorite fashion idol or icon? I'm going to say I don't have one. Believe it or not, I'm not the biggest fashionista. Oh, wait, sorry. You cut off again. The last part where you said was fashionista. Yeah, I said I'm not the biggest fashionista. I said I wear what's <laughs> cheap and what's clean. So I honestly can't even answer that question. Hey, that's the best way to go. As long as that you're, as long as you're comfortable and you're looking great, because you always do. So hey, it's working for you. Thank you. Thank you, Kayla. Thank you so much for doing this interview. Before we go, go ahead and let everyone know where they can follow you or where they can watch your show on Instagram Live. Yeah, pretty much every handle. It's Kayla Braxton WWE. Uh, you can catch me on WWE's The Bump every single Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. on the WWE Network and all the social media. The Braxton Beat is on the official WWE Instagram page. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kayla. Guys, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more. And until next time, we'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye.